Hey there, welcome to Black Umbo Southern Gardening. Today we're gonna to plant a small peach tree and then chop it back. I'll show you how to grow a small tree. Let's go. Look how close I am. Maybe you can't see it. I'm about six feet away from my plum tree and I'm gonna put a peach tree here. How can you have trees put so close together. Well, it's an idea called backyard orchard culture and what we're going to do is keep our trees very small. You can train your trees and uh, keep them very, very small and pack a lot of production into a small area. Let me get this hole dug. This is some pretty hard clay here. In this area I have grown what's called a pumpkin pit in the past and it was somewhere around here. It might have even been right in this area, which means I've already dug here and there's some soil down here that should be pretty loose. There's actually a little sand down in here, which is unusual for my area. Now I'm into some clay down at the bottom. All this loose stuff I want to have available to backfill with. Yeah, that's some clay. Now these trees will grow in this clay in my area. It just takes them a while to get established in it. It's hard to send your roots through clay, but they can do it. You want your trees to be planted in native soil. You don't want to amend this hole in any way. And that seems counterintuitive, but the reason for it, they have to learn to live here. There's some hard clay. They have to learn to live in it. They have to learn to thrive in the environment that is here. I'm going to try to go deep here and give this tree some broken up clay though. Notice I've gone and etched up the sides of the hole with my shovel, putting some grooves in there. And this is, in this smooth clay, you want that uh, those, those little grooves in there you want those to be there so that the roots, when they encounter that groove, will go into them. That'll encourage more outward growth rather than the tree just circling around in this hole. Let's go get our tree and see what the roots look like. Well, here's my tree. You can see it's already waking up. It's actually best to plant these when they are dormant, fully dormant. This one's starting to wake up and you can see little buds and leaves coming out along here. These are good. These are encouraging because we're going to chop this tree about right there. We're going to chop it about knee high. This is an early grande peach tree. There's the bare root system that came from Ison's nursery and if I put that in there that bare root system sits nicely in that hole. Let's see this is the graft union. The root stock is a different variety than this. This is the graft union. You don't want to bury it any deeper than that so we'll bury it up to about right there. You want the graft union to be above soil. Look at that clay. That's just straight up clay. It's a little bit flocculated. That means it breaks up easily. That's because there's a lot of organic material in my yard. All right, I'll kind of pound that down a bit. Let's see here. Use a stick or your shovel to lay across the hole to tell you where your ground layer is going to be. I think we're going to be good right about there. Maybe a little bit more backfill. One way to easily backfill is to take some of your sod and dump it in there upside down. That uh, grass and stuff down that deep will not survive, but it will add organic material to your soil. There we go. Now let's start backfilling here. Where's my loose dirt? Here we go. At this point, I'm not, ch I'm not real picky about which direction my tree is turned because we're going to choose buds later on. We don't, we don't need to worry about all this top growth. We're going to choose buds to go in the direction we want them to go as we uh, as we prune this up and shape it. You want to get all these roots nice and covered and this finer soil I want to try to work it inside this root system here. Make sure that all those roots are in good contact with soil. So I'm going to press it down nice and firm. Here we go. But as you see, there's nothing special going in this hole. 
it is native soil and native soil only and that's on purpose a couple hundred pounds of weight will do all right we're starting to get close to our graft union here so we're gonna get down with our hands and level this out yeah i've dug here before because there's a piece of charcoal that uh was in one of my pumpkin pits. All right, let's water this in, get it nice and wet. All that soil that's left on our tarp there equals the volume of air and air gaps down in that heavy soil. Because we've taken out more than we've put back in, obviously, we've displaced some of that soil. And even though we've packed it in really well, there are gaps down in there. So what we're doing with the water is filling in and hoping that will help collapse some of those gaps down a bit. Over time, this will sink down a bit. That's two tree holes worth of soil that's been displaced, so it's really not that much. What we're gonna do is put a mulch ring around here to suppress the weeds while this guy grows. All right, I like hardwood mulch, shredded hardwood. I find it to be very good. So we're going to use this entire bag of mulch and we're going to cover up our hole and go a little bit out into the yard with it to keep the yard from competing with this particular plant. The thicker the mulch, the more weed suppression you get. So I'm going to go out to about here and I'm going to pull that mulch back away from the graft union make kind of a, a volcano around this tree just to keep that graft union exposed there and there we go that's what we're going to do this tree will get established here but there's one more step got to keep it small you would be tempted to leave this tree alone and you see it's putting on leaves on these branches but that's not what we're going to do we want this tree to send out a couple of Branching, that's that's damaged, so that comes off already. We want this tree to form some scaffolds, and we want those scaffolds to be in the shape of a goblet or a funnel. We want them to go out and have an open center. But we also want this tree to be small. So right about here at knee high, that's about where we want all this uh, branching growth to happen. The problem I see is that some of these buds look like they're dead or damaged, We've got some buds coming out down here. That's too low. We want our buds to be coming out about where this guy is. There's one here, there's one here, there's one here. And that's actually really good. Look, they go this way toward me, that way. This one goes that way. And this one here goes that way. What we're gonna do is cut right, right there. We cut at an angle. We're gonna trim this guy back a little because there's some dead material up here. And so what we have here is the beginning of our scaffold. And we staggered our buds here a bit, right? So this branch will come out here, then we'll move up an inch and a half, that one will go that way, move up an inch, this one will go that way, and then here at the top, that one will go toward you. That's what we wanna see. We're gonna let this grow and branch out. There's a little damage right there, so we'll snip that off too. Um, so that's, that's looking good. It looks extreme, doesn't it? It looks like we've just ruined our tree, doesn't it? Never fear, pruning never hurts a tree unless you're just a moron and don't know how to, you know, don't, don't know anything about trees, but you're watching videos online right now to learn about this stuff. And what I'm telling you is this tree will grow just fine. This tree will branch out. It'll be just like the plum tree I'm about to show you. So we'll check back on this once it starts putting on some new growth. And so the thing about pruning in, in the spring, uh, dormant pruning and spring pruning, it encourages growth. It really encourages a lot of growth. All the resources this plant's gonna be pumping up from the rootstock into this this branch, this uh, trunk here, um, is, is gonna come up, to, especially to these top branches and really force out a lot of growth. We may have to come and remove these, these uh, buds down here that look like they're growing, and uh, th let's do that now. That will ensure that all the resources go to the buds that are left behind. So anywhere we see buds down here where we don't want them, we'll just pick them off. Use your thumbnail. <clears throat> I am gonna put my tag on here. 
I like to tag my trees with a permanent tag because these ones that come from the nursery, they tend to fall off and uh, disappear. So I'm going to put one here. Got to follow that and make sure that it doesn't ring the tree as this tree grows. There we go, our early grande peach is in. And uh, yeah, looking good. Check out this plum tree. We chopped it right here, the same height as we chopped our peach tree. Uh, the peach tree is actually a little bit taller. But what we had on this plum tree, we had four branches growing in the right direction already. So we just selected those and we cut it back to there. You can see the old growth from the first year, and this is all first year. Or you can see on this tree the, the original uh, form that it took that we preserved. It's this whiter looking bark because we painted it with a, a protection protection layer. But up here you can see all this new growth. Yeah, this tree shot out this year. Now we've already pruned up this tree uh, for the season and it's looking good. So yeah, nice. Okay, well that's how you do it. Our little tree is planted. Really easy to plant a bare root tree and uh, chop it back like that and get it ready to grow. And next year we'll have a tree that looks like my plum tree, but it'll be a peach tree right here. These are not too close together. Backyard orchard culture is all about small trees and close spacing. In fact, one of the pioneers of backyard orchard culture is Dave Wilson Nursery. And over at Dave Wilson Nursery, they've been experimenting with planting things insanely close, like four trees in the same hole. And you can do that. The only thing you have to watch out for is that you remain diligent on pruning. It, it is up to you to keep these trees small. Otherwise, they want to grow straight up. So that's what we're doing here. We've got one, two, we've got seven fruit trees in my small backyard here. And we're going to keep them all very small. And I might even add another one just over there. So, yeah, that's how you do it. It's called backyard orchard culture. It's not your dad's growing method. It's not commercial orchard growing method. It's not wide spacing so you can drive trucks between your rows. It's backyard or orchard culture. Keeping things small and manageable. You want to be able to handle these trees and get to the top of them with sprayers if you need to treat with insecticides. You want to be able to harvest your fruit just right here at hand and head level so that you're not losing any fruit that's way up there and you can't get it because if you go up there the power lines are there you can get electrocuted and die. Nobody wants that. You don't want a bunch of rotten fruit falling all, all over the place because you couldn't harvest it. This is a method that allows you to take modern uh, techniques, modern practices in the backyard and grow lots and lots of fruit on a healthy tree. You don't even need a dwarfing rootstock, you just prune to keep it small. If you'll look at my playlist, Backyard Orchard Culture, you'll see the start of this tree and you'll see an introduction to this concept and uh, I'll show you what we're, you know, how we're going to do this over the years. Follow my channel, subscribe, and you'll see what we do in our backyard. But also, go check out Dave Wilson's Nursery. He's got a YouTube channel, and they've got a whole bunch of information on backyard orchard culture. Also, I strongly suggest you get the, uh, the book by Ann Ralph. It's called Grow a Little Fruit Tree by Ann Ralph. That's a great book. It goes over a lot of these techniques. And a lot of the different pruning techniques, you can festoon these trees, you can espalier these trees, uh, you can grow them in different growth habits. And, you know, there's all kinds of things you can do to make a fruit tree do what you want it to do. And that's what we're going to do. So this little guy here looks pathetic, but in a couple of years it's going to look beautiful. I guarantee it. This is a wonderful addition to my backyard. Hey, thanks for joining me on Black Gumbo Southern Gardening. If you like our videos, I hope we've earned your subscription. Please subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, and we'll talk to you later. Happy gardening. Bye-bye.